it's a very gloomy and rainy day today so I tried to um, turn on as many lights as I can but I do live inside a cave so <laughs> today I wanted to do a little bit of a first quarter three month reading wrap up of some sort um, I read 23 books within the months of January, February and March um, because I started using Storygraph this year I wanted to talk a little bit about um, my stats um, not too much because I don't really I don't really there's a there's a lot of information that I don't really care that much but I thought that some of the information was interesting I will say I haven't figured out how to uh, look at the the stats and the pie graph on story graph in terms of like like customizing it to see every three months because at the moment I can kind of see it January February and March but as the months go on it'll probably include that in the stat like include the previous months in the stats and I don't know how to like change that so if if you know how to do that please let me know down below um but I thought I would do it month by month because that's easier to to kind of look at so within the month of January it looks like the majority of my pie graph is on books that were emotional um and then I took a look at the genres and the majority of the books um, that I read were romances of course and then the runner-up was classics which I thought was interesting in terms of the tags that I made myself the majority of the books that I read I would consider to be teen books um, and then the runner-up to that is lover the next part of this statistic is kind of what I'm most interested in and that's format um, apparently in January I read 63% audiobooks and then 38% print books I don't think I read any ebooks or digital books um, during that month in the month of February it looks like I read a majority of light-hearted books which I guess isn't really specific because it can be a light-hearted romance it can be a light-hearted funny book or non-fiction you know things like that I also read a lot of romance during February, shocker, um, and the runner-up to that was contemporary. In terms of my own tags, I would have considered a lot of the books to be in the lover category, so that just means romance. <laughs> um, and then runner-up to that was adult, so uh, in January I read a lot of teen books, in February I read a lot of... Uh, adult books. In terms of format though, in February I read a lot of print books with 40%. The other 40% goes to audiobooks and then the 20% goes to ebooks or digital books. Now in the month of March, once again, I read a lot of light-hearted books. In terms of genre, it was also a lot of romance followed up by contemporary, so that's pretty much the same as February. When it comes to my own tags, again, romance, lover, uh, that's kind of my own tag, and then uh, runner-up to that is adult books. In terms of format though, I didn't listen to anything on audio, so 100% goes to print, which is very surprising to me. Alright, so that was all the statistics that I wanted to go through. Like I said, this is my first time using Storygraph. This is my first time looking at, you know, that pie chart and things like that. I might change the way I do it next time. So the very first book that I read in the beginning of the year was a continuation of a series that I started back in December. And I read the sequel to the Stephanie Garber book, uh, series, which is called The Ballad of Never After. I absolutely absolutely loved this book like I said it is a sequel so um, I don't want to say too much about the plot I did do a full reading vlog it was a very long reading vlog um, but uh, yeah I will leave the link to that down below if you want to know more of my thoughts but I will just say this is definitely my favorite 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 in the series. I just don't want to say too much more about this just because it is a sequel and I don't want to spoil it for you. I will highly recommend this series though. 
Next up, I listened to Tessa the Dervervilles by Thomas Hardy. Um, I did a video back in January where I had a, like kind of a, a tentative TBR of the year. Like the, these were books that I needed to read um, this year because I was sick of having them on my TBR and whenever I get sick of having a book on my TBR, I end up just getting rid of them. But Andrew says I'm not allowed to do that. I have to <laughs> I have to give them a chance. So this was a part of that TBR. I really enjoyed Far From the Madding Crowd by him. Um, I think I read that last year and this book was the one that you know everyone kind of knows. We follow a our main character Tess who was told by her family or her dad that they are actually like related to this other family with a similar last name um who were like very very rich or something and uh she was sort of told to go to that family home and like ask for work um just because they Tess and her family um are really poor and you know they they kind of I don't know they were they were kind of not really scheming but they were they were sort of like oh you should kind of get in good terms with them maybe they'll realize that you you are related to them and maybe we can have some money you know something like that um there's a lot more drama that happens um she ends up having this relationship with someone in that family and uh yeah, I, I I still like Thomas Hardy's writing style. I think his plots are really interesting, but this one was just... Yeah, I don't know. I never know how to feel about his books because it's like, I, I think he's really good at describing atmosphere. And I think that's my favorite thing about his books is because I, he was writing around the time of the, like end of the 1800s where people were sort of like it wasn't really the industrial revolution like charles dickens part of the part of the world i don't know if it was even around that time but um it was like very countryside he always describes like big fields and like living in the country and like a lot of his characters like don't enjoy the city you know that kind of that kind of a vibe and i always really really like his books for that vibe um and i find his plots interesting but for whatever reason i don't end up like loving them so much the next book i picked up was a poetry collection it's called bargain bin rom-com by lena norms um if you don't know lena norms she is a youtuber um she's also a poet i really like lena's videos um she was <laughs> pretty much one of the people that inspired me to start knitting but um yeah i really like her videos and uh, i wanted to check out her poetry collection and i did it was okay i think her poetry is very fun it's very um it's very wordplay and it's very fun which I don't know it's hard it's hard it's really hard for me to like absolutely love a poetry collection so even though there were like certain poetry poems in there that I really liked I don't know if I would like say that I loved the poetry collection does that make sense it was okay it was good next I listened to a non-fiction I listened to digital minimalism by uh cal newport um i was recommended this book by andrew this book is basically just him talking about social media and not really social media just like the media in general i think his whole point of this book is to say that it's not that you need to quit technology and social media and like the internet all together you just need to be able to use it purposefully um, it needs to be functional instead of 
a distraction which um like andrew and i already do that anyway like we don't like <laughs> I don't know. I feel I feel like we don't we don't really get too distracted by social media. Obviously, I still do just because I make videos on YouTube and so YouTube is kind of more prevalent in my mind, I guess. But in terms of like I don't have Twitter. I don't really I have Instagram, but it's private. I don't I don't want to have it public i also don't follow like i use instagram to keep up with people that i actually know and um i use facebook for like the same reason for my family i also use facebook for like um like businesses like local businesses because uh, they just they update what they what's going on and when they're open and if it's a public holiday like that's usually you find all that information on their facebook page so like i don't that's kind of all i do online i think the most i do online is just youtube and also i refuse to have tiktok but yeah it, it, it was really good i i, I enjoyed it but as I got to the end, I was like, I kind of already do all of this. <laughs> so yeah, it's if you're if you're like needing some encouragement to sort of like get off social media or like not be so on your phone all the time, I highly recommend picking this up. Next up, I continued with my marathon of the Stephanie Garber um, book series, and I picked up a curse. For true love i didn't enjoy this one as much i did do another reading vlog if you're interested um i think the reason why i didn't enjoy this one as much is because it she splits the povs into three characters and if you know me you know i am a character person i love being in a main character's head for the whole series like getting to know them and everything and so because she split it into three sections three povs i f felt kind of disconnected from the main character evangeline i did get to know two of the other characters a little bit better which was really good for the plot i just i would prefer to be more inside evangeline's head i guess so yeah uh, check out the the reading vlog if you're interested. Next up, I picked up The Blue Castle by L. M. Montgomery. Um, I decided to pick this up because Ariel Bissett from um, her channel, and also because uh, I listened to Books Unbound, um, she was raving about this book. Like she really, she really enjoyed this book. She really likes L. M. Montgomery. Um, I picked it up because I like the premise, the sound of the premise. It's about this girl who is like in her late 20s, I think she's 29, and she has never really come out of her sheltered life, I guess. She's got a really controlling family, um, and she lives in a community that's very very gossipy and very like controlling I guess like in, in terms of like they would talk about you if you do anything out of line if you do anything just a little bit off to what they used to they would kind of gossip and they would tell your family you know things like that that kind of a that kind of a community um, and one day she in the beginning of the book she realizes that there is something that might be wrong with her health and the doctor is like, oh, you don't have a lot of time to live. Um, I'm so sorry, but there's nothing we can do. And so from there, she figures out, she's like, okay, well, if I'm going to die soon, I really want to live. And she starts, you know, kind of living life her own way. At first, I kind of enjoyed this. I, it's it's a very it's a very quiet, very slow, very low stakes. Um, I wouldn't say eh, I wouldn't say cozy, but it's like that. Nothing is too 
dramatic in the book and so in the beginning I thought oh this is kind of nice like it's not too dramatic her family's really annoying and and I hate them <laughs> but um but I thought it was you know she was gonna grow and everything and grow as a person and like you know live her life um so yeah it's I don't know it's, it's a bit hard to rate because I liked that it was kind of this quiet slow nothing too dramatic kind of a book but I think it, it was just missing something I don't know what it was missing it was just missing a little bit of an oomph I guess so yeah the next book I picked up is also a part of that TBR pile that I made and that book is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare this is a historical romance uh, we follow Izzy, I think her name was Izzy, yeah, I think it was Izzy. Uh, she is the daughter of this really well known author, professor author. Um, he was known for, his, her dad was known for writing this kind of children's fantasy type of a book that everyone fell in love with. Um, however, her dad has since passed away. And she realizes, because she's a woman, she was not left any money from from his, you know, kind of work and, you know, his life. Uh, because it all went to her cousin, who she's not really, like, close with. So, one day, she gets a letter from a lawyer or a solicitor or something. I don't know what they're called. Um, saying that your godfather has also passed away and he has left you a castle so meet me at this castle that is now technically yours um and then we can sort it out so she goes there in the beginning of the book um and then she meets this duke that's there and the duke is like what do you mean this is your castle this is my castle <laughs> um and the story goes on from there um, I love, you, you know this if you watch my channel, I love Tessa Dare's other series, Girl Meets Duke series, I think that's what the whole series is called. Uh, I especially love The Duchess Deal, um, which is kind of that similar vibe to this one where we follow a kind of a grumpy duke who's a little bit injured because in this one the duke is uh blinded because of a duel that he did and um so it it had a similar premise to the duchess deal not really but like um a similar you know character dynamic between like the female and the and the male and so i thought i would really really enjoy this um i didn't really enjoy it that much i don't know it was just i think the 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 author you know the book aspect because her, her dad wrote um this series so there's like larping in it and i'm that part of it like it was a little bit too silly for me and uh yeah i don't i don't i don't really like i don't really like because it, it just reminded me of like monty python and i'm not a monty python fan i don't like that kind of like slapsticky kind of comedy it's just it's just not my it's just not my vibe so i didn't really enjoy this one next up i read another book from that tbr pile and i read the little princess by Frances hodgson burnett um this you you probably know what the little princess is about but we follow sarah who is um the daughter of a captain i think he was a captain or something um and so she's pretty wealthy she goes to this uh, boarding school and you know she's just living her life one day turns out her dad had died oh no I th was he a captain or was he like an uh, an explorer or something like he was he was looking for something I don't know I can't remember but yeah so one day turns out her dad has died and uh, so she doesn't have any money and then so she has to sort of like switch up her life 
and you know she can't you know afford these really nice dresses and she can't afford the single bedroom the really nice single bedroom that she has in her uh boarding school um and i really enjoyed this one i thought this was such a i don't know why i hadn't read it before i actually want to watch the movie i think this is such a nice children's book i think this is such a nice book to for for like younger kids to read because the the whole point of the book the whole message of the book is that you you just need to be kind to everyone no matter what you know if they're poor if they're rich whatever like you just you just need to be a kind person and i and i love that and it's called the little princess because she sarah is you know she everyone says oh she acts like 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 a princess but to to the other people acting like a princess is acting stuck up and kind of posh and kind of like prissy i guess but to sarah acting like a princess is being being kind to everyone being polite being well mannered and and just always looking at the bright side in life even though her life kind of turned upside down and you know she doesn't have a very good life after her dad died um but she still like has it in her head she's like i i pretend that i'm a princess and and princesses are kind princesses are you know uh polite and well-mannered and nice to everyone and uh, princesses are grateful and you know princesses are positive and they look at the bright side so I don't know I just I just really really like this book next I picked up another historical romance I picked up say yes to the Marquess uh, which is the second book in the castles ever after series which is the Tessa Dare uh, romancing the Duke um, series um, so this one we follow Sophie I think her name is um, I listened to this one on audio as well and uh, she has been betrothed is that the word <laughs> um to this guy i think he's i can't remember his name but he is off in some because he's like some sort of like political kind of i, I don't know he's, he's some important man um so he's off he's always you know like not really in town he's not really with her he's he has a job where it takes him kind of all over the world so they've kind of been engaged for about eight years and every time they want to get married he's like i oh pierce i think that's his name pierce um every time they want to get married um pierce is like oh yes but i'm busy doing this you know i can't i can't do this now let's not do this now blah 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 one day in the beginning of the book sophie's like all right i've had enough i don't think because because it was kind of an arranged marriage too by their fathers and their fathers have both since died and so sophie's like i don't really like him anyway doesn't seem like he really likes me doesn't seem like he really wants to get married to me um i barely remember what he's like anyway because they've been apart for like eight years i think i'm gonna call off the wedding of the engagement and so she's like i don't know who to talk to about this the only person in town is his brother and so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to his brother and be like i just we need to cancel this whole engagement situation and um and so we're both we can both you know be free to live our separate lives um so she goes to talk to the brother and the brother's like why would you do that no you need to you need to get married to my brother because that's because i have plants he's got his own like plans i forgot his name but he's got his own plans and um and so he's like well i have my own plans too i was um in i have just inherited a castle and i want to start my own I think she wanted to start like a brewery or something she wanted to start her own pub or something um so 
the whole book is the brother trying to convince her that um, that the, the the wedding will still go on, but then the romance ends up being between her and the brother. I don't know. It was it was okay. It was okay. The next few books I read for a popular books um, video thing i can't remember what i called it but i will leave the link to that down below so i won't talk about them here but the books i read were icebreaker by uh hannah grace and then i read you and me on vacation by emily henry i also read the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood and then i read red white and royal blue so um i won't talk about them here I already did uh, non-spoiler reviews um, in that video so I'll leave the link to that down below. So after doing that reading challenge I decided to reread The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more in this video but um, this is a contemporary romance. Um, it follows the trope of fake dating which I really really enjoy. Uh, we follow Olive and Adam who are the two characters kissing um, in this uh, in, in, on this cover um, but in the beginning of the book Olive is trying to convince her best friend that the best friend can go and ask or like go make a move on this guy that Olive sort of went on a date with. Olive went on a date with this guy previously she didn't really like him all that much but um but the best friend is like oh no 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 I don't want to do that because um you know you you went on a date with him but Olive was like no trust me I'm not into him so she tries you know to you know make the best friend know that she's moved on and she's you know moved on to someone else and she likes someone else and so she makes this little bit of a, a weird deal with adam um well it didn't start out that way so the reason they're kissing in the cover is because they their first time meeting in the beginning of the book is them kissing because she is like my best friend's coming can I kiss you? And then they kiss. So that's like the very first page. So then after that, the whole campus, because she works at, uh, she's a PhD student, and she works at this, uh, at the labs on this campus. And um, after that, the best friend obviously told a, a bunch of people. And so a lot of, a lot of people in the, you know, in, in their life kind of think that they're dating. So they kind of have to pretend like do this whole charade he also has you know something that he needs help with as well and this whole fake dating her would also help him with something as well i don't want to say too much because i reviewed it in that video so um go 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 and watch that one but i really 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 enjoyed this one so reading that first ali hazelwood book i <laughs> liked it so much that i was like you know what I want to pick up more by her. So the next book I picked up by her was Love on the Brain. Um, this one follows a... I don't think there's a... I don't think there's much of a trope in this one. I guess enemies to hate to love um, um, in this one. But we follow... What's his name? I forgot his name. Levi? Levi, that's his name. Levi and B, who are uh, they they've known each other since their like grad school days they're now both separately working in separate you know separate companies and all that but one day b gets a job to um because she's a neuroscientist um researcher person um she gets a job at nasa um, to kind of conduct their helmet research because they want to do stuff with helmets. I don't know. Um, a lot of Ali Hazelwood books, in terms of the plot, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's very like STEM science-y. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a journalist, so I, I know nothing. I'm a writer. <laughs> so anyway, so um, she, uh, she gets a job at NASA and it turns out, so she's like, gonna be the head of this uh, 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 
team um, but she has a co-leader and that co-leader turns out to be Levi um, because he is the engineer he's an engineer so the neuroscientists and the engineer have to come up with this fancy helmet for the astronauts that's the plot right um, I didn't enjoy this one as much uh, I just uh, I felt I talk a little bit more in in other videos where I talk about Ali Hazelwood books. I think I talked about it in uh, the most recent one that I did, which was me reading Bride by her. But I this one I felt like the main character was a little bit too quirky. Uh, I get that a lot of Ali Hazelwood books have like this quirky main character. Um, this one was a little bit too quirky for me. I didn't I didn't like her as much. I liked Levi. He was really nice, but um, yeah, she kind of got on my nerves a little bit. Next up, I read House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This was a uh, what would you call it? It's it's kind of um paranormal I, I don't know is it paranormal urban fantasy i don't know but we follow it's a it's apparently a loose retelling of the 12 dancing princesses fairy tale which i thought originally was going to be really interesting so i picked it up um i didn't really like it <laughs> so we follow our main character forgot her name but she is i think like the fourth eldest daughter or something she's one of the older ones because they have a bunch of like younger younger siblings um her dad is kind of a a duke of some sort like he's a, he's a he's a well known man i guess family in this in this uh, island town so apparently they like live on this island. this is the thing that confuses me because I'm like I don't know if, is this set in a real world or is this set in a fantasy world um, and also is this set in like a kingdomy kind of a world or is it real life that part of it was really confusing so apparently they they all live on this island it's like a fishing town island off of the a mainland we don't even know what the mainland is but the her dad is sort of a well-known kind of higher up kind of a guy so she like lives in a mansion and everything um so her in this in her we we start the book off with a funeral um one of her sisters had has passed away it turns out that all a lot of her sisters have passed away. I think three have passed away um, since before the book even started. Her mum has also passed away. So there's a lot of death in this family. Um, she has a stepmother. Um, and uh, and so the, the whole plot of the book is her trying to figure out what is happening to her sisters like why are they dropping dead um she reckons that with this most recent funeral with the most recent sister she reckons that um the sister was murdered or pushed off a cliff or something like i like because because everyone is like oh they just it was either natural causes or they killed themselves but she's like no i think something is doing this to them so that's kind of the overarching plot um, everything else, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. It's really, it was, it was kind of boring. I didn't, I thought it was going to be really, really interesting. I like the vibe. It's a, it's just like, you know, the, <laughs> this sounds really weird. But if you've ever watched like the Barbie movies, you know how they came out with a bunch of Barbie movies that were like fairy tales? There was a specific one, which was the, um, Rapunzel one the character of the witch character her vibe fits this book's vibe if that makes sense um so i like the vibe but i didn't really like the story i thought it was really boring 
and it's kind of confusing too but so once again the next couple of books i did for a video so i will leave the link to that video down below but i basically tried to read books from authors that um i haven't really liked in the past so it's like my second chance i'm giving them a second chance basically so i will leave the link to that down below because i did non-spoiler reviews for these four books so the books i read for that was uh punk 57 by penelope douglas and then i read it happened one summer by uh tessa bailey next i read the roughest draft by emily weberly and austin sigmund brocker and then i also read from luke off with love by mariana zapata so if you're interested in my thoughts on those books the link is down below after that video, I was a little bit disappointed in some of those books and so I wanted to return to the author that I've been loving and that was Allie Hazelwood. So I read Love Theoretically by her. Um, this one, we follow Elsie who is this physicist and um, you know she is kind of a, I don't know what you call it, I don't know what they called it in America, but in Australia, I think I would say that she's kind of like a like a like a university tutor, I guess. And obviously, they don't get a lot of money, and so the other thing, her like second job, I guess, is to fake date people. There's this app that where you can kind of like sort of pay for it's not really an escort because she doesn't specifically like sleep with them she just like shows up with them um to certain events if they need a date if they need to convince someone that they have a girlfriend you know things like that so she does that on the side she's been doing that but usually she uh doesn't repeat the the um the guys that she does this with but with this one particular guy something about him she really likes and she's like i i really feel bad for you um i really want to be friends with you and so she kind of has this repeat um customer this guy um so she has been sort of pretending to be his girlfriend for about a year and it's always like during you know she doesn't like hang out with them outside of this it's always just like you know she meets them when they need to go to like a family function or something so this guy keeps needing to bring her to these family functions because his family is like pestering him about settling down and you know all that but uh during these family functions she meets jonathan oh jack yeah his name is jonathan but we call him Jack apparently um so Jack is the brother of this guy that she's fake dating and um and then it also turns out that so outside of this fake dating thing she is um applying for a job and it turns out that uh this guy the the brother is like a part of that interview commit like he's a he's a part of that world he's gonna be you know working really close with her and so when he sees her he's like what the heck i thought you were this person like you're my brother's girlfriend i thought you were this person like this is all a ruse like you know all that stuff and then um yeah it goes from there i feel like whenever i try and explain her books it gets more confusing than it actually is it's not that confusing i'm just really bad at explaining it um i like this one i like this one a little bit more than love on the brain uh elsie as a character is still that quirky you know just a touch too quirky for me but she was okay and this this book actually made me cry <laughs> which is really weird um but yeah i because there's a lot about like her struggling with uh, finding work and having money and um, just like being unemployed and that hit me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I like this one. I really like Jack. I thought Jack was really sweet. With this one, I also really like that their romance, there was never a 
point where they didn't talk about what they were feeling there was never any sort of like hidden hidden information that they didn't want to share with each other which um you would think that you would think that a lot of romances would withhold information between characters because it builds tension but Ali Hazelwood is here to prove to you that you don't have to have a miscommunication trope to make it to write a good romance like I don't know just she doesn't she doesn't use the miscommunication trope the way other people use miscommunication tropes like I don't know how to explain it but yeah I really I, I enjoyed that one next up I read another non-fiction I read uh, Wedding Toasts I'll Never Give by Ada Calhoun this is sort of um, essays on uh, marriage and weddings and um, I don't know I just uh, I uh, Ariel Bissett uh, once again has talked about this book and really enjoyed it. Lena Norms has also uh, recommended this book because she also really enjoyed it. I don't know. I, I really like it. I did because I listened to this and I did order a physical copy and it just hasn't come yet. Um, but yeah, it just sort of talks about the realistic side of uh, weddings and getting married. Not, 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 not really weddings, but just like getting married and um, I don't know if you know but um, I'm getting married in a couple of months and so I felt like I wanted to read something like that um, yeah I really enjoyed it okay and the last book that I picked up in the month of March was Bride by Ali Hazelwood once again I did a whole video on this so I will leave the link to that down below it is spoiler free um, so don't worry about spoilers i didn't spoil anything i know this is a new release so i didn't want to spoil it for people that haven't read it um but this one is a paranormal romance um which is not something that she's done before uh we follow uh so this world has humans vampires and werewolves right that's all you need to know about this world she doesn't really go into in depth um in the world building which is fine because I'm here for the romance, not for the world. But uh, we follow Misery Lark, who is a vampire who has been this sort of uh, bargaining chip, bargaining person, collateral is what they call it in this book, um, in the human world. Because um, in order to keep the three species at peace, and not be in war with each other they kind of have have this bargaining thing where they're like uh it, I, I will take a vampire from your clan um it has to be someone important and then uh, you can take one of our important humans and so if anything happens they are the first to die so she's been doing that pretty much all her life uh, she get, she comes of age and she's like I don't she doesn't have to do that anymore but then her dad is like listen we need to make a deal with the werewolves this time um, you need to marry the werewolf alpha and so it's a marriage of convenience trope which I love I love 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 marriage of convenience tropes um and uh yeah so she lives with she gets married to this um werewolf alpha they've never met the first time they met was her walking down the aisle um and then something happens when she's walking down the aisle and then um yeah i don't want to say anymore go watch my non-spoilery reading vlog if you want to know more because i talk a lot more about it um there so yeah that's everything i read a lot <laughs> within um the past three months i don't know i've just been in such a good reading mood i think it's because i'm just kind of like leaning into the books that i like i don't really want to put pressure on myself to read books that i don't like and so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep doing that i'm just gonna keep picking up romances and books that maybe other people won't like but i know i will so 
yeah let me know if you um if you've read any of the books that i just talked about let me know your thoughts um and if you have any book recommendations please always comment down below and let me know because i'm always looking for books um to read so yeah i hope you're having a great day thank you so much for watching cheers